Hello and welcome to Nightlight's Orientation to International Adoption. Once you view this video, a follow-up telephone call will be scheduled with your program coordinator to allow us to get to know you better and to answer any questions you may have concerning the material presented in this webinar. When you received the orientation email, you probably noticed it had many links to additional information. I urge you to save this email, bookmark it, print it, or do whatever you need to do to keep it because you will be required to access the checklists as you complete your parent education and prepare your dossier and may need to refer to some of the information. In order to access the checklists in our portal, you'll need to sign in using the same email and password you created when you filled out your application. There's a link posted here and in the email for password help should you require it. In this video, we will review the Hague orientation topics for Taiwan. We'll also discuss choosing a home study provider, briefly touch on parent education, filing the I-600A with United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, explain the service plan, and the dossier instructions for Taiwan. Nightlight has been in operation since the 1950s. In addition to many international programs, we also offer domestic adoption, home study services, foster care programs, and we pioneered the Snowflakes Embryo Adoption Program. The Colorado is, uh, office was opened when our original president, Ron Stoddart, moved from Southern California to Colorado in 2008. And today we have offices in 10 different states. The best way I've found to go through the documents is to have you open the orientation email, <clears throat> open the orientation document checklist, and then I'll go through each document explaining its purpose and talking about specifics. Please be sure to write down any questions you may have so your program coordinator can answer them during the follow-up phone call. The first document I want you to open is the HIG orientation topics for Taiwan. It is important that you read this document thoroughly, but I'm going to touch on some of the main topics. Anyone who is adopting internationally must have an approved home study, apply to receive pre-approval to adopt from the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, and prepare a set of documents called the dossier, which will be submitted to Taiwan for approval. Different countries require different documents, so this is why the dossier instructions are specific to Taiwan. Children awaiting adoption in Taiwan reside in institution in institutions or with foster families. Although these homes are a significant improvement for many of the children, they do not measure up to the level of care a child would receive in a family environment. Any time a child is in less than optimal care, they are at risk for malnourishment, delays in any or all areas of development, unhealthy living conditions, sickness, and abuse that may include emotional, physical, and or sexual abuse. These children all have trauma in their backgrounds from abandonment, inconsistent caregiving, and substandard care. This is why parent education is an important part of the adoption process to help you prepare for your child's needs when they come home. The Taiwanese foster care system is very well developed and foster families are trained and supervised very closely. In general, children in Taiwan are considered to be well cared for and fairly healthy. Children being cared for in orphanages are typically given less than one-on-one -on -one attention due to limited government funding. These children are more likely to be delayed in all areas or some areas of their development. Families should expect that a child will be approximately four months delayed for every year he or she has spent in an orphanage setting. The most current laws in the, on the adoption process from Taiwan can be found on the Taiwan Central Adoption Authority site called the Social and Family Administration Ministry of Health and Welfare. Eligibility requirements can also be found on the U.S. Department of State website. The eligibility requirements change from time to time and Nightlight remains updated at all times. This is one of the reasons our application form asks so many questions. We want to ensure that you are eligible to adopt from the program you desire. The trend and climate of inter-country adoptions has declined, has declined by almost 70% since 2004. The reason for this decline 
is a result of, shif of the shift in political acceptance of inner country adoptions. Most nations navigate two opposing forces, trying to accommodate, accommodate adoptive parents and the needs of orphans, while also satisfying powerful anti-adoption influences. The increasing difficulty in, difficulty in adopting internationally is actually intentional and meant to reduce the number of adoptions. The motive behind the anti-adoption movement is complicated but includes national pride, political retaliation, and well-meaning but naive desire to prefer indigenous orphan care solutions. It is important to note that our agency has no control over the rate at which referrals are made by our partners in Taiwan. While many children with special needs are available, agency also have no control over the children that are made available for adoption. Your openness to gender, age range, and various medical conditions will affect the length of time you may wait for a match. The more, the more open your family's criteria um, for a child is, the more quickly you will be matched compared to families who request a very young female with minor special needs. Finally, there are several holidays um, in Taiwan that may affect um, your adoption and, uh, and local offices will be shut down. These include the Chinese New Year Peace Memorial Holiday in months of January and February, the Dragon Boat Festival in June, and the Mid-Autumn Festival and National Holiday in October. Travel around these Taiwanese, the Taiwanese and U.S. holidays is not advised as government offices, including the American Institute in Taiwan, which will process your child's visa, will be closed during those time. Now let's talk about post-adoption reports. The Taiwan Central Adoption Authority are Taiwan partners, the Chinese Social Welfare Institution, and Nightlight requires the following post-adoption reports. Formal reports by social workers, by a social worker at three, six, and twelve months post adoption. Then annual post adoption reports from the second to the tenth year post adoption, or until your child turns eighteen. Nightlight also requires a one month informal report to be completed by your social worker within one month of your child's arrival home. This will help ensure that your family receives proper support and guidance should any issues or concerns arise, which are common during the initial weeks home, and will help your adoption placement be successful if addressed early on. Post-adoption obligations should be taken very seriously as our agency is held personally responsible for the supervision of your placement. It is very important that you comply with reporting as adoption programs are placed in jeopardy when families do not fulfill their obligation. Failure to complete post-adoption reporting puts our program at risk and may prohibit future families from adopting orphaned children. Please take note that we have very strong worded language regarding post-adoption obligations in the agreement you have signed for our agency, which allows us to take you to court for non-compliance. While we haven't had to file a court case, we have had to send letters reminding families of their promise. It is also important to note that the U.S. Department of State enforces post-adoption compliance. Failure to comply will also affect your, play, your plans if you, have to, if you would like to adopt in the future. One last thing regarding Hague topics. No fee should ever be paid to a foreign supervised provider, an adoption central authority, and or any other person involved in your adoption case in a foreign country without written permission from your nightlight coordinator. Historically, this has not been a problem with Taiwan, but if you are asked to pay any fees in country that are not outlined on your adoption fee schedule, please notify our office immediately. Bribes are strictly prohibited and will be reported to the U.S. Department of State. I've gone over most everything in this document. If you have thoroughly read it and understood it, you can sign it electronically, date, and submit. Of course, if you have questions about the content, be sure to ask those during your follow-up telephone call. Next, we'll talk about choosing a home study provider. Nightlight is your placing agency for your adoption. If you live in a state where we have an office, we'll also be your home study agency. 
If you live outside of our service area states, you must choose a home study provider, and it's imperative that your home study agency is Hague accredited. If you live in a state served by Nightlight, you will soon be contacted by that office to begin the home study process. If you do not, please ask your program coordinator for the home study agencies we recommend. Finally, once your application has been accepted by the home study provider agency, please complete and upload the home study provider information sheet in the international orientation checklist. It's very important that you return this before you begin the home study process. The first reason is because Nightlight must have an exempt provider agreement in place with the agency prior to you beginning the home study, which we will take care of. And secondly, we will ensure the home study provider is Hague accredited as required. This is very important. If you begin the home study process prior to providing Nightlight with your home study provider information, you may have to choose a different provider which could result in losing money you paid to the previous home study provider. Once your home study is complete, which can take anywhere from two to four months or longer, depending on how quickly you and your social worker are able to obtain the necessary documentation and conduct home study interviews, you will be ready to file the Form I-600A applications for application for advanced processing of an orphan petition. The link to the form is available within this slide as well as within your dossier booklet with additional instructions. Once you are ready to file the form, you may reach out to your program coordinator should you have any questions. Once the form is submitted, it will take USCIS six to eight weeks to process the request and issue the I-600A approval, which will then become a part of your dossier submitted to Taiwan. When you receive the orientation email and open the portal, you had access to an orientation document checklist as well as a separate checklist for international parent education documents. A link was provided to a webinar explaining Nightlight's parent education requirements. If you've not yet watched this, you must do so that your parent so that your parent education will not be delayed. As a recap, all families are required to complete 10 hours of Hague education prior to completing your home study. Additional requirements consist of reading about and understanding post-adoption stress and depression, completing a post-adoption support plan, learning about the history and culture of your child's country, speaking with a parent who was previously adopted through Nightlight, and reading a book entitled The Connected Child. The next document I want to bring to your attention is the Child Preference Form. This is a document that's used to identify your preferences for a child, such as gender, age range, and medical needs. It's important to understand that this document may be updated throughout the process to adjust your preferences as you continue being educated about adoption, talking to others who have adopted children with specific needs, and meeting with medical professionals to determine what you feel you can handle. This form is used by your social worker in writing your approval statement in the home study and by our program team as we watch the shared list for children. The service plan is a document that identifies the six adoption services that are rendered in inter-country adoptions and who is responsible for each service. Nightlight Christian Adoptions is your primary provider and placing agency for your international adoption. As the primary provider, we will coordinate your adoption, help identify a child for adoption, and arrange for the adoption with the sending country. We will also work with the agency providing your home study and coordinate with the staff to provide translation and travel arrangements. As your primary service provider, Nightlight is available to assist you, whether you're in the United States or traveling abroad. We will be working with the Central Authority of Adoption in the foreign country. They're responsible for identifying children who are available for adoption and arranging the adoptions, securing the necessary paperwork, showing termination of parental rights and agreement to adoption. The central authority in the foreign country approves the child background study and your home study provider will perform the home study on you as the prospective adoptive parent. You will not have direct contact with the central authority in a foreign country until you travel. 
the central authority works with our in-country coordinator to ensure that the foreign laws are being followed with regard to adoptions. On this form, please fill in the name of your home study agency and their phone number, as well as the social worker from that agency and their contact information. Nightlight and your home study provider will make non-judicial determinations of the best interests of a child and the appropriateness of an adoptive placement for the child. The central authority of the foreign country in conjunction with Nightlight will monitor a case after a child's been placed in your family until final adoption in country. If you should decide to disrupt the adoption before it becomes final, our agency will work with the foreign central authority to assume custody and provide care until the child can be placed back in permanent care. Also in this document is a list of contacts at Nightlight who work in the country program you're adopting from. Please contact any of your program staff with any issues you're having at any time. In short, international adoption is a big deal and it's an honor to be part of your journey. We know it can be draining and overwhelming and want to provide support and services that meet your needs. Your adoption will be finalized while you're in country and when you return home, you will be expected to continue to work with your home study provider to complete post-adoption reports. Your home study provider will visit you at specified times following the adoption to provide consultation on adjustment, help you identify or problem solve any issues that have arisen, and write a report to send along with photos of your child to Nightlight who will forward them to the foreign country. Please check your service plan for the report schedule required. Again, timely compliance is necessary. It's important to know, and you'll be reminded of this throughout the process, that if you're struggling with your adoption plan or having adjustment issues with a child when you get home, please contact us and let us help you identify resources and rally your family, friends, church, and other professionals to provide support and guidance to you. We have a post-adoption connection center ready and willing to provide resources to families. A lot of Nightlight staff are also adoptive parents. We've experienced going through this process, soaking up all the information, learning what we could, and wanting to prove that we're worthy to adopt so we understand how hard it is to go back to these same people and admit that you need help. But we want you to be successful, and we know that sometimes there's a lot of stress and struggle through transition phase and beyond. We want to be a beacon of light to you and work with you to ensure a successful placement, a well-adjusted child, an attached, happy, and healthy family. Once you can fill in your home study provider information to this document, please sign it, date it, and upload it to the portal. The last thing is the dossier instruction booklet. I trust that you're able to read the booklet and watch the dossier video, which touched on some specific items. I encourage you to contact your program coordinator to discuss any questions you have about the dossier instructions. To wrap up the orientation, I want to remind you of the checklist on our online portal with some orientation documents you need to either sign and upload or sign electronically. Be sure to watch the video explaining our parent education requirements and look at all of the parent education documents under the International Parent Education Checklist in our portal. You will also need to watch the video explaining the dossier instructions. Please do not just watch the video. It's also important that you read the entire booklet, which contains more specific information about the dossier. And you're probably wondering, where in the world do I start and what do I do next? My suggestion is to talk to agencies who can complete your home study. Once you contact them and sign a contract, you can finish the service plan and home study information sheet in the orientation checklist. Make sure they're approved as your home study provider, and then you can begin your parent education. Don't forget to submit documents as they're completed. In addition, we always want you to feel free to contact us with any questions, comments, or concerns you may have. If you're working with a nightlight office for your home study, your program coordinator will notify the home study office that you're ready to start once you've completed the follow-up orientation phone call. Please email your Nightlight Program Coordinator after you've watched all the videos and are ready to have the follow-up orientation phone call. Thank you and enjoy your day.